So Crossover is getting a huge Cyber Monday sale. Crossover Plus is going to be 70% off, which is pretty much the cheapest you're ever going to get Crossover. And also this is one of the rare opportunities that Crossover Life gets a discount. So Crossover Life, of course, is the lifetime subscription to Crossover. And not only that, Crossover 23.7 officially releases as well. Also bundling in the new version of Game Porting Toolkit, allowing many Windows DirectX 11 and 12 games to run on the Apple Silicon Mac. So in this video today, I'm going to show you how to get all of these discounts from Crossover Crossover, and we're going to be looking at all of the fixes and features that the new version of Game Porting Toolkit 1.1 and Crossover 23.7 bring to Windows Gaming on the Apple Silicon Mac. So first things first, if you want to take advantage of this huge crossover sale, then make sure to click the link at the top of the description. Every purchase made after following this link helps to support this channel and the content that I create. And then all you need to do is to scroll down and then click on the buy now button here. And then we can go ahead and enter a promo code in this box here. So if you use the promo code badass 70 you're going to get a 70% discount from Crossover Plus. This gives you the full version of Crossover and one year support. This is not a subscription. This entitles you to any version of Crossover that releases in the next 12 months after purchase. Or you can take advantage of the very rarely discounted Crossover Life, the lifetime subscription for Crossover. In it, you get the full and latest version of Crossover, software upgrades for life, unlimited support, and you'll get 65 swag backaroo dollars, which allows you to buy a whole load of Code Weaver swag and help to support the wine project. To take advantage of the sale, all you need to do is to use the coupon code BADASS23 and you're going to get a huge 23% discount from Crossover Life. So just be aware that this coupon code is valid for 24 hours only on the 27th of November based on the geographic location of your computer. So exactly what are we getting with this new version of Crossover 23.7? I think the biggest headline change is the fact that we have Game Port Control Kit 1.1 integrated into Crossover. So at the moment, it's hard to say exactly what changes 1.1 has brought to the table. However, it is proof that Apple and Code Weavers are now working together as this integration happened in the 23.7 beta, even before the Apple developer community. I made a whole video about what the implications of that might be, so please check it out. I'll leave a link to this at the top of the description. Then the next most important feature is M-Sync, which basically replaces E-Sync. It's a Mac-specific form of synchronization based on Mac Semaphore, which is supposed to vastly increase performance in CPU-bound games. So I've done some initial testing, which seems promising, just toggling on the M-Sync function, which seemed to improve performance substantially on Cyberpunk 2077 on the M3 Max. The results appear suspiciously a little bit too good, so further testing needs to be done to see how M-Sync performs with other games too. Next up, we have some nice changes changes made with Molten VK and DXVK, which helps alternative ways of rendering games like Diablo 4 and Dark Souls 3. Now it's easy to forget that Code Weavers have been working on their own DirectX 12 implementation via D3D, especially with all of this news around game porting toolkit, but it actually manages to run DirectX 12 games like Diablo 4 very well. And if we compare it to game porting toolkit 1.1, it actually stacks up pretty well. However, Wine D3D manages to suffer more from shader cache stuttering, whereas when I turn on D3D Metal from game porting toolkit 1.1, it seems to be a smoother experience. However, it's really positive to see that Code Weaver's own DirectX 12 solution is making progress, and in this case, it is nearly on par with D3D Metal. Next, there are fixes for multiple games, including Counter-Strike 2, which now has more stability with D3D Metal, and also a game like Fallout 4. So this hasn't worked on the Apple Silicon Mac for quite a while now. However, as you can see here, it's running pretty nicely on the Apple Silicon Mac using D3D Metal. Now, performance on this is actually pretty decent. However, there are a couple of tweaks that you need to do so that the game doesn't crash. One thing you should do is to turn off the gore setting within the INI files. This tip was posted by Mac Pro Tips on the Apple Gaming Wiki Discord. I'm going to leave a link to their Mac Gaming YouTube channel full of useful benchmarks and tutorials. So anyway, it's great to see that Crossover is bringing back popular games like Fallout 4, making them playable once again on the Apple Silicon Mac. So anyway, that is my Crossover 23.7 video. If you discover any interesting new features or impressive benchmarks using M-Sync, then please make sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.